Welcome back to the Boys and Bolos podcast. We're down here in the barbershop studio. Welcome, Jarrett. It's good to see you in person. I saw you on Saturday or Sunday. Literally yesterday. I saw you yesterday. You came to my house. We watched Spurs. We watched Spurs game. Spurs, Spurs game. Beat Everton. So now we're down here in the in the studio. Back in the studio. Getting it done. And I leave early for California tomorrow, so we're going to keep this one right and tight and short. Uh, probably two hours. I think we always ask this form of question every week, but what was your biggest surprise from match day, I believe, 11? My biggest surprise from match day 11 was... Is it the ongoing good fortune of Arsenal Football Club? No, it doesn't. I just don't. That doesn't I, move you? No, it doesn't move me. I think the biggest... The City-Liverpool game today? That wasn't a surprise. It wasn't a surprise. A one nothing yeah, Liverpool I mean, win City, at home. Meh. What was my big... This is a really good question for this week. I think it's that Brentford winning. Not not allowing Brighton to score. I think it shows a couple things. One, that Brentford at home is more of a juggernaut than maybe we thought. Because I think we both called Brighton to win this game. Yep. But uh, Ivan Tony on a double... Two good goals. I actually watched most of this game. It was I a Friday. That, it was a Friday game too. Yeah, I just think that was kind of like my surprise. I I can't really extrapolate on that more. I guess I guess because we had picked Brighton to win, and then they did. And was this at? I'm pretty sure. You it, know, you know what it was for me. What was it for you? Chaboy Mason Mount getting a brace. Yeah, I don't know how many braces he's even had in his yeah. career. He's normally he scored, one goal. This is his first two goals of the Premier League this season, I think. Yeah, I mean, Chelsea has obviously scoring troubles, but the second one was a deflection. The first one was, honestly, they just screwed up and made it the first. Advantage. I thought the second one was a free kick. It was, but it... It, it was it, a deflection free kick. Sorry, no, sorry. It wasn't a deflection. My bad. It wasn't a deflection. It was that Martinez just had like a brain fart. Oh, yeah, He, like, yeah. went early, and, like, it was just a pretty, like, it should be a routine, I think save, a pretty routine yeah. save, but he it just, It was, like, like, in the middle of the goal. It was, like, right there. It was just right in the middle of the goal, and he, it kind of had a little he, like, swerve moved, on it. He, like, moved one way, and then he, like, he was, like, oh, shit. Yeah, he and went he to like, go yeah. near post in behind the wall, and I think he just went too prematurely, and then the ball went in, and it's just 100% his fault, in my opinion. But, you know, you got to put the ball in frame. Mason puts the ball in frame, and so, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess we talked about Lester a lot last time. Yes. And they them, looked really bad. Yeah, them tying like they, Crystal they, Palace. They looked okay. Not they looked as bad as we said. Like we, I I feel like a lot of our stuff when we when we speak about a team, it's a little bit hyperbolic. Like we exaggerate a little bit and we like kind of make it out more than what it is. No, they performed exactly how we portrayed them like as just this floundering like kind of meh team and the fact that I think it just also shows that Crystal Palace just like when they played Arsenal they don't have a lot of answers besides Zaha going forward and like that's they just don't have a guy they can they do a lot of good things defensively they can hold the ball in the middle of the field and then they, they have nothing in the front in the front third I think a lot of teams are really struggling with scoring because yeah. When I was okay, so let me go back to the Brighton game, and I know you just talked about the Crystal Palace Leicester, which I also thought was just kind of like that was a game where Leicester really needs to win, so that way they get out of the bottom. They have one win. They have one win and two ties in eleven game, ten games. So they have they do have a game in hand. This was week eleven, but I just want to go back the Brighton when I when I'm watching Brighton attack, I'm like, who do they have up top? Where's their talisman? And then I remember Mape. that Mape went to Everton. And then you watch Everton play, and he's not even playing there. Like, I actually don't know. Clearly, that was just the clubs wanting to do it. And at the end of the day, he's a price taker, not a price maker. Oh, so maker. Brighton, uh, Mape went from Brighton to Everton. Yeah. Sorry. They, so you're right. Brighton do not have so anybody up top. So Brighton are missing that hole, and like Welbeck is stepping up. But Danny Welbeck, he hasn't been a top tier player in ten seven year, years, ten, eight I was years. Say like, ten years. He's a little weathered, and I'm being <laughs> gentle with my commentary. So I'm like, Brighton have nothing going forward. I'm like, oh, well, maybe Mape and Everton will be great. Everton literally, it was like Franklin was just took a, mainlining. Took a page out of Jose's. Well, took the whole book, and each page said, park the bus a thousand times. Anyways, it just seemed kind of like, I don't know, I'm watching this. I'm like, meh. Chelsea's struggling to score goals. City obviously struggled to score goals today, but I just, you know, you're not going to win every game. But I was pretty surprised after the way Arsenal Beat Liverpool. I assume that City would beat Liverpool, but that's the prem. It's brutally competitive, and you never really know what's going to happen. So, 
I guess my biggest surprise was how well James Milner played because I thought he was going to be a liability, but he actually really held it down and they didn't really have a uh, Klopp didn't really have a choice because uh, Trent couldn't play full ninety. He was coming off a knock, and he so, could play a full ninety, but I, I don't know if that who else I, is going to play. Right I don't know. Midfield. I don't. Milner's I mean, not right, an outside back or a wing. Play back. right back though. Besides, I I don't. Nobody. He put somebody else back there. No, I'm not the sure. Only one. Maybe Carvalho. He's quick. I, I I don't know. No, too much of a liability. I think Milner's the only one that can like. I mean, he's not going to provide a lot going forward, but at least he can hang back and. So either way, even if it is Milner, and, I thought he played pretty well. Block the ball. I just thought face. he played pretty well. You know, he played well. And, so the biggest surprise, probably actually, I think about it, was Kepa played out of his. Mind. Oh my god! There was one series where he like sh- he, he saved three in a row. Yeah, like, there was, was a flurry, and some of them were like reaction saves that. I mean, Iker Casillas at his best, or I Emmanuel think Neuer. Like Kepa, it was ridiculous. What Kepa has been doing since being benched a couple of years ago, and you know, and Mendy coming in, is he's been seeing like like a sports psychiatrist, maybe because like honestly, to 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 be able to. Hold it together, be backup, only play some cup games for basically two years, and then just step in, uh, and and perform like he's been playing. It's something to behold. It's actually I, the re- the second coming of Kepa is like what I'm here. What I'm, I'm here waiting for. for the all or nada, and it's the Kepa story. Yeah, and it's just amazing. Sure. And you just follow him around. He's like walking around London. And people are like you shit, mate, and he's like depressed. And then he goes, sees a psychiatrist, and he's, like, doing probably, like, hallucinogenics. He's, like, in the Amazon walking barefoot, doing ayahuasca. He's getting in touch with himself. Because I agree, some cosmic shift has happened because he's playing actually well. It's scary. And I don't know what happened with Mendy. Mendy, didn't ha- he had some howlers. He had some bad games. But, like, I still take Mendy normally, but Kepa's making such a good argument now. Here's my thing. I think it's just really unfortunate timing because the World Cup's in like yeah. five minutes and Mendy's going to be playing for Senegal. And Senegal are in a pretty tough pretty tough group. Ecuador's looking good. They have Senegal and they have Holland. And Kepa only goes into the uh, into the Spanish team maybe as a third. Maybe. Probably as a third. Maybe. I don't know if De Gea sticks in there, but they have, they have a first and I can't remember. He played in the Euros for them. But one of the questions I had for you, because there was almost like a popping off – between Bernardo Silva was pushing, oh, who is he pushing? Robertson. Was it Robertson? Might have been Robertson. He seems like no, the most it was candidate. somebody else. Salah. Oh, Salah. Yeah, yeah. So who wins in this cage match? It's two on two. It's Salah and Van Dyke, and because these were the people who were in this little pushing. Yep. Salah and Van Dyke versus Holland and Bernardo Silva. Two on two cage oh, match. That's really tough. I always think. See, I think of a fight. I always think of that. There's like pictures of like Salah on vacation. And he's like on a boat and he's like got no shirt on. And he's like oh, he's super, super jacked. He's super ripped. I don't want to go up against that. I don't want any part of that. Because like here's where I here's where I think I think Salah takes Bernardo really yeah. easily. Van Dyke is huge. He's very big. But like when they were standing next to each other, so is Holland, and Holland's younger, and Holland doesn't have a Jordan Pickford knee. So I don't know what happens. I just think it's like a fight I would love to see. Holland's Holland. I th- Holland's very. Um, I think he's a very. St- he's strong. He's a strong man. Yes, I think he's very strong. Jeff. I think he's a very s- tall, strong boy. Super, super awesome analysis of Holland's <laughs> tall, body strong structure. boy. <laughs> tall, strong boy. Anyways, I if you're listening, that's to a this, tough. That's a tough one because I think I actually think Salah would take Silva. Oh, I think sure. Salah would hit Silva like the Acme hammer, and he would just like go down to like one megapixel but then i don't know what happens like holland could be crazy enough he just like judo chops he did like so and then, that build up a play where foden scored and it got called back he really he he fully ripped down oh he just like what, pulled down fabinho's fabinho. soul into the grass you yeah. know holland is a freak when it comes to like physical just he's he's a huge athlete so it, I don't know. it was interesting you could tell their game plan was just Stay as close to Holland at all times. It didn't matter if what he was doing, don't give him a yard of space, and it worked because like he got frustrated. Like as soon as like across the come of the box, there'd be a guy, and he they'd be like shoulder to shoulder. He didn't have any chance to like jump or like make some athletic move, like some bicycle kick, freaking like karate kick move. He was neutralized. It worked. It worked. And so now that's if you have the personnel to do it, which Liverpool did. You got Van Dyke played out of his fucking gourd today. 
probably his best game in two seasons. I'd say he was very good. And Gomez is the best game he's ever played in his entire life. I don't know about two seasons, but okay, he looked good. Gomez, Gomez, that was the best game he's ever. Gomez played. Gomez will die tomorrow. He's never because played this was better. the best game. He'll he'll never play this good again. Yeah, Unless that guy's Gary, been atrocious in the past. Like just an absolute bad, like the worst defender. But maybe the real problem is they have to play near Trent because he may be the actual worst defender. Oh, Trent's a huge liability in yeah. the failings that they. What have did back I say there? to the group chat? What did I say about Trent? You if said, he was playing. At that, like, if he had started and played, City would be winning that game, one hundred percent. I think it's a hypothetical that I guess it's a hill you can die on, but who cares? They didn't. The first time he came into the game, the, his first touch was so poor. Oh, Trent Alexander Arnold's a free, he's a freak show because some people he's actually you remember that you remember that uh, meme thing that was going around that dress thing where it was like is it gold or is it blue and people like <laughs> yes, fought each yes, other yes in like the malls of suburban America about whether it was gold. I was like whatever. That he is Trent Alexander Arnold is the gold or blessed uh, or the gold or blue debate for Premier League soccer fans because some people think he's amazing and they say like oh he's going to be one of the best outside backs ever and other people are like dude he's not even a defender he's such a liability and what Eddie said today was spot on it's like if you have him on your team you have to understand that there is a balance. You're gonna get negative things. I, he's gonna expose you, leave the team out to, you know, to to counterattacks, whatever. But you're also gonna get one of the best outside backs in the world, maybe ever, with crosses and service. He's freakish with that stuff. I, I, uh, I'll back off a tiny bit because he did almost score. Like I think, like in the 75th minute, he did almost. He score. almost scored. He he was a little off on a run, but either way, he's so bad. Like you cannot be fine. He's a good midfielder, but he's not. He's not a good well, left. But that. Right but that's back. really the question that like modern football has to tackle: Are the outside defenders in modern football? Is their first, you know, how important is it is is it for them to be good defenders? That's really the question, because we're assuming that oh he has to be a good defender. It's like no, whatever. We'll have two trees sit in the middle, and then they'll attack, and who cares? True. Like PK and Puyol would sit and wouldn't leave. And Danny Alves was like one of Barcelona's best player for three or four seasons because he always had, as the ball would come over onto the weak side, he always had time and he would make good crosses, good passes. That's why Danny Alves is the most winningest club player ever in history as far as trophies. I will argue that I think it's really important that they're a good defender because I do want to lose games because of that defender. And I can give an example of another player, uh, Emerson Royale. They, when Spurs but he doesn't sport- play in a four-back. That's tough. It's he still, doesn't play in a four-back. It, no, it's tough. It's tough. There's a difference between defensive responsibilities and being an outside back in a four, right? Like, true, 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 true. Like, like his responsibility, I mean? like, he, yeah, there's, there should be a defender there to right, cover they have, him. Right, because they have three center backs. Well, it's so like, it's even harsher. So I, the argument, so my argument isn't even valid because he, d- Trent is a, def- is a right back. Exactly. You're actually cutting back from your argument. That's like yeah. when Marcus Alonso plays outside. I don't care if he gets roasted because that's not what he's in there. He's in there to be right. the connective tissue between the back and the front of the field. I just you can't be ball watching in, in on the six, and that's what he does. Oh, he's he's. I don't. I wonder if there's stuff going on with him off the field. So I have a little empathy because he seems so literally not tuned into the games. The goal against Arsenal, it was just so classic. Step in and one step back. He's not exposed. The ball has to. It's just a different situation. I mean, these are the basic tenets. Of playing defense. So, anyways, we've now talked about Trent Alexander-Arnold for 30 minutes. It deserves, it deserves some discussion because he didn't play today and they won, and they won <laughs> against the be- well, arguably the best team in the league. Arguably top three teams in the world. Right. So, this was week 11. Let's look at week 12, which is an actual joke because it's this. Starts Tuesday. Starts Tuesday. What is it? Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then they're a weekend game. So, we are really... Starting to get in the depths of the Premier League trying to figure out how they're going to get all these games in before the World Cup. And for the teams that are in Europe, whether you're in Europa or you're in the Champions League or you're in the European Conference League, <laughs> it's getting really basically between now and the World Cup, you're going to be playing every 96 hours more. Because they're going to finish all the group stage games before the World Cup. Right? Yeah, the group yes. stage games need to be finished before the World Cup. And if you look at the schedule, and I want to bring up the game days. It's only like four more weeks until the World Cup starts. The last game before the World Cup is on November 12th and November 13th, probably that weekend. We're going to play match day 16. 
And normally there's 38. So normally the midway point would be 19, which would normally hit somewhere in Christmas break. But we're going to hit that. And then the next time you're going to play is actually Boxing Day. So the day after Christmas, which is just, it's just really insane. We're going to have unprecedented injuries this year due to fatigue and due to players playing way too many minutes at a very high level. Especially the players that are, you know, battling for the top. Like, I think Arsenal has actually had a very atypical season. If you look at their last 10 seasons, they haven't really had many injuries this far. They've been really lucky. And that, if you're, okay, if you're talking about lady luck, and now let's get into the lady luck discussion in Arsenal, that is your biggest argument, that they have not dealt with, like, big injuries. Chelsea's lost Reese James. Chelsea lost N'Golo Conte. Those are two starters in our Champions League team. Golo Conte is one of the best holding center mids ever. Reese James is Reese James. Thinking mm-hmm. about City, has City had any injuries like of note? Nope. They, I the, don't. The know. top two teams have no injuries. Yeah, they they've been able to navigate that. What about Liverpool? I feel like Liverpool have been. Did they had any? No, well, they have Jota, which I felt bad for him today because they have Jota and Luis Diaz is out. Yeah, I, something happened to him today with his hamstring or with his knee or something, and you could tell he had to get. I don't know what it was, just uh, carted off, basically. Yeah, he had to get carted and off. And you just feel for him because he plays alongside Ronaldo on, on the Portugal t- team, right? Yeah. And I don't think he's <laughs> he's going to be fit for that. Uh, he looked bad. It didn't look good. Uh, and he almost scored a goal. That I, who knows how would have went if he had scored that goal. But, yeah, I mean, Spurs have had to deal with Kulosevsky, Lucas. Uh, who else? A little bit of Romero. I'm sure City um, and Arsenal have had injuries, like but they haven't come to the first 14 guys. First 11 and the first three off the bench, which is really where if you have those players healthy, it's going to be better for you to get points. But I think Arsenal has had a very lucky season. If you want to talk about luck, for me, that's it. Now, we can get into the subjectivity of VAR. I don't. I think you're totally right. I don't think the refs, we were talking about this in chat, I don't think the refs have figured out how to leverage bar, VAR to be the best tool yet. And today's example was crazy because when I when I saw it in real time, I was like, oh, this is some tomfoolery. Bamford obviously initiated it. But the point that was made on broadcast and that you made is that – so Bamford knocks into – was it Gab- Gabriel? Gabriel. So he knocks into Gabriel and then knocks him over. Let's say Gabriel gets up with a knife and stabs Bamford. The ref basically came over and gave Bamford a yell for initiating it. Now, the question I have, though – Sorry, I use the stabbing to make the point that like just because Bamford initiated doesn't take away whatever Gabriel did after. Yeah, the that kick out still, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, whatever the kick out. However, when I watched it again, and I watched it about an hour before I came over, Gabriel really I don't I didn't necessarily see the intent of the kick out one, and that's subjective. You could say that there is. But the other thing is I don't necessarily think that there was a lot of contact. Yeah. Bamford sold it. So I think that that's why the red was taken back. If he had made more contact, then I think the red stays. But anyways, the whole thing was a shit show because here you are, you're like, okay, Leeds is going to get a red card, and I think it was going to be another pen. It was going to be a penalty, and that's why- in the box, And penalty. that's why people were also complaining that there was an offside, but that offside gets negated because it didn't lead to a goal. The only reason that- VAR would look at that offsides if there was a goal. But the fact that there was a penalty, another incident, negated the offsides. So everybody was like all up in arms about the fact that the offside didn't get called, but the linesman didn't see the offsides. It would have been reviewed if there was a goal, but then they looked at the penalty instead because the penalty is the incident, so it negates it. It's That's crazy, and I didn't even know that until yeah. you brought it up now, but there's just so many layers. So, so but it, it, if you look at it in real time, it was crazy because it was like, okay, Lee's going to get another penalty. I'm like, does Bamford take it again and try to bury miss it? Yeah. I, I don't know. Then it goes all the way. They look at it, VAR, and then it comes back. Bamford gets a yell. Gabriel gets off. No PK. And he gets a yellow, too. Oh, did he get a yellow? But I'm not. It's it's. It was unclear to me whether he got a yellow for like after, for like arguing, or if he got a yellow. They like took away the red and gave him a yellow. So like the kick out wasn't enough to give him a red, but it was enough to give him a yellow. So I think I, maybe he so got t- it for getting into it or like, you know, like getting into the snafu. But either way, the whole thing was super weird. What how, what I haven't seen and I think has happened and I can't remember, this hasn't happened yet, where a player, that, and this could have happened too before VAR. This is the situation where I'm dribbling the ball, you come in and you tackle me. Brutal tackle. And the intent is a yet worth a yellow. 
The ball pops out and goes to a player on my team. So now we're going to play advantage. We know when it stops, it's going to come back and it's going to yellow card you. You get up, follow the play, take another guy out, and now you're going to get a red. <laughs> you're going to get the first yell and the second yell. Now I've seen that done before. But what I haven't seen done, and I wonder if VAR would ever do this, is somehow spring two yells on a play because it's reviewing a red. <laughs> like it is, yes, in yeah, theory, yeah, it's yeah. possible. For sure, yeah. You know, so it's like you take me out, advantage goes on, That that's a yellow. Farther down the play, you actually have a, a handball. In the box. In the box. So now it's going to be looked at a pen. This is a perfect example. Now it's going to be looked at a pen, and while they're looking at the penalty, and I don't think they can, but if they could, they could go back and be like, that's a yellow, and the handball Doesn't is count. also a yellow. So it's a red. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but what you're saying is they would only be looking at the handball for the penalty. They wouldn't be going at right. the yellow. But the thing is, from the, the laws of the game, or the way we interpret the game, is that initial tackle on me was so bad, it deserved a yellow. Yeah, he would go back and give him a yellow. He would go back and give him a yellow, but then if he also has to give him a yellow for the handball in the box, maybe it wasn't inadvertent, like maybe it wasn't an intentional handball, which is a red. a time red. paradox, and then the, the game collaps- collapses in and itself. Yeah, there's and a black hole. There's a black hole. And then Matthew McConaughey's on the inside, <laughs> and he's still looking. That's right. Yeah, he's still looking for the universe. Okay. Anyway, that got, that got, that got kind of crazy. I don't, I, my argument isn't, my argument is for getting rid of VAR. <laughs> Just get rid of it. It's not making the game better. It's not ga- making the game any more clear or any fairer. It's just it's just horrible. It's horrible. I don't it's know if it's so horrible. Bad. I actually have no problem it's with VAR if good. it's done well. It ruins the flow of the game. Guys can't celebrate goals anymore. It's oh, you never... can celebrate goals, but they might get taken away. Right. It 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 hasn't really improved outcomes or decisions really that much when I mean, you have linesmen you're still going to have goal line goal technology you're still going to have that i actually don't mind it it's I, grown on me I, enough it's, it's not grown on me because it's not done well enough in the it, it, it's done well in the, in the champions league because it's quick so i think your problem is with the execution i think the execution not is with the technology the technology is fine it's the execution in the if they're going to keep using it the way they use it in the Premier League, it's just, it's, it's pointless. Right, so you, it's, have, so you have a problem with the application, not the theory of it. No, the theory is fine, because I, I don't have a problem with it in, like, the NBA, I don't have a problem with it in NHL, or in, in I mean, I think it's kind of slow in the NFL, but I don't watch that anymore. But yeah, I think instant replay technology is, can have its place in sports. I just think that the guys that are you are, like, using it are the ones, are not very good at, like, interpreting the rules like i don't think i think the same guys who are making bad calls in the field are making bad calls in the var booth even though they get to see it three or four times from seven different angles in 4k it's i will say this i think it could be better in the prem i think they're getting better with it it's even gotten better since once they first started honestly okay, it's opinion. better it's just hard to it's improving yes if i was to look at it like in a condensed kind of like how they were using it three years ago, four years ago versus how they're using it I mean, it now. they used to use it. Better. You want to know how bad it was? Bruno Fernandez had like 20 goals in a season. It's fair. That's fair. how bad it was fair, because fair, they were fair. just giving penalties for everything. So anyways, but what I want to say is I want to go to the Firefest, which is coming, a.k.a. the World Cup. They will botch VAR. The, the, the power will go out. Something's going to happen with VAR, and it's going to be controversial. Every single World Cup has this controversy. On some level, there's a play. There's something that didn't happen. I always think of 2010 England. Lampard strokes it. They're losing to Germany, one nothing. Strokes it from like 30, beats Neuer, hits the crossbar, goes in by about a yard, bounces up again, hits the crossbar, and goes out. And Neuer collects it, and it's like nothing happened. And to this day, that's like, dude, the ball was a yard over the line, but the linesman just wasn't up there. He was on the last man, couldn't see it. It was sunny, life happens, whatever. I just think in the World Cup, there's going to be controversy, and I want to see controversy, and I want to see how Bar A deals with it. And I'm also wondering if Bar is not going to collapse in the World Cup, because I just think, as we've talked about, there are going to be so many issues with Cutter. I, I think it's like they're you know, not Fire Fest trying they, to put on a film fest, trying to put on a music festival. I think they'll be fine. I I would be more confident if they were just using Var as it stands today, but now they're adding in that whole ball sensor offside automatic thing that they're doing with all the cameras and the, is that going to be in the world cup that's going to be in the world cup i don't think you should have anything in the world cup 
that influences the game that you didn't have in the in the elimination games in yeah. the sorry in the qualifying games. Well, no, that's the whole problem with like how some qualifying games. Didn't yeah, well, that's what Kaki Gaff only had for half the time, and in El Salvador, we should have had a couple penalties. There was just like only two cameras in that entire stadium. Right. <laughs> so it's like why okay. the rules just that that's the other thing. If you eliminate that's my argument. If you eliminate VAR, it it levels the playing field globally, right? So you don't have to have all these advanced technologies and all these stadiums and stuff like you just have a bunch of ref, like you have the refs and you have the goal line technology and that's it you just have the game as and a, everybody yeah. is in the same playing is everybody has in the same playing field no pun intended it's crazy let's look at week 12 that's tuesday and wednesday brighton and nottingham forest play nottingham forest will get beat brighton need to bounce back <laughs> crystal palace and wolves I don't even want to talk about this it's game. Gonna be I hate so both bad. of these teams. Deep. Your eyes I don't out. actually hate them. They just always seem to take points off Chelsea. Arsenal and City is getting postponed because Arsenal, as you looked up, which was cool, they have to play a Europe Europa League match on Thursday, so they got this postponed. Bournemouth, Southampton, that's another wooden spoon game, which is going to see who sucks the most. Brentford, Chelsea. Ooh, Brentford played us last year. It's at it's at the um, at the bridge, right? It's at Brentford. Brentford last year came to the bridge, beat us, and we beat them at Brentford, this being Chelsea. Over those games, over the 180 minutes, they outplayed us for 145 total. It was insane. So I'm not looking forward to this game. This is a game that Chelsea we, have been trending up, though. They've been we trending have. Positively. We won five out of the last six games. Yeah, no, you've been so, good. You guys have been good. Get uh, the se- resurgence of Kepa. Second coming at Kepa. Oh it, I hate that it trends and it tracks with Kepa, but it does. Liverpool, West Ham. West Ham is trending down. Liverpool's coming off this win. I would hope that they don't drop all three points or even any points to West Ham if they honestly want to make sure that they're in Europe next year. They need those points. Newcastle United, Everton. I want to talk about this game. Newcastle look good against United. I thought they looked good. Joel Antin was the, nice. They were the better team. They were the opinion. better team. Everton... When away from the good good Ison Park, they are parking the bus. Oh, they're they're going to be bus. at St James. Do they have a chance of even getting a point? Yes. Newcastle look good. No, they have a chance of getting a point. They don't have a chance of winning though. Okay, so you think the best they're going to do is tie? Yeah. And the worst Newcastle is going to do is tie. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. What's the percent on Newcastle winning then, in your opinion? 75. Okay, next game. <laughs> Everton, Tottenham. This is probably going to no, be... No, no, my I, bad. United, United Tot- Tottenham. This is probably going to be one of the games of this week. Both teams are playing playing okay. Tottenham's playing way better than United. Tottenham are on 23 points after 10 games. United is on 16 after 9 games. United really kind of need this to say, hey, we can still hang out. This game is going to be at the Theater of Dreams. What are you thinking for a score here? I'm thinking a draw. Two, thinking two. A draw. I hate playing at Old Trafford. There's been so many draws over the last like five two, years. 2-2 two at Old Trafford. Who's scoring for United? Uh, Rashford. Brace. Really? Yeah, Rashford playing well. He came off the bench and almost scored. He is but, playing well. Um, I'm surprised, actually, that he didn't. Maybe because of the midweek game, but. He, yeah, I don't, Ronaldo's not doing a lot up front. You know, he maybe has a one goal, two goals uh, in all competitions. And, you know, Anthony maybe, maybe might, it might be an Anthony and Rashford, one, two. I was thinking Anthony and Ronaldo. That's like low hanging fruit, I think. That's but it could like be, I mean, Spurs, hand. Spurs could slice up their defense. I mean, slice up, up their defense. Yeah, I, I actually think that with Richarlson picking up a calf injury and Kulisevsky picking up a knock the day before the game, they may start the game in a 3-5-2, which would be positive for them with Basuma holding in the middle. Uh, I think they look a lot better that way. Basuma's very good, especially at winning the ball back. I think Hoybier moving going forward as he does on the uh, on the uh, Danish team. Danish? Danish? Yeah. Uh, is actually better for for Spurs and uh, with Kane and Son playing up top, I think uh, they're more dangerous that way. What's uh, your prediction so. here? What's well, I, well, I I my prediction was two two, but 
I'm more. I'm, I feel like you've talked yourself into a Spurs. I'm win. yeah. I've talked myself a little bit. I think Spurs go to Old Trafford and and could pull it off three two. I think Spurs are actually going to pull this off. United just looked watching them play. They just looked like they were out of ideas. They sure. didn't really know what to do. When you sub a goat off and he's frustrated, he's just like, dude, who am I working with? Yep. You have Fred and Casemiro vibes. Like the whole thing's weird. I thought Casemiro looked particularly rusty and particularly like kind of um erratic i think that's like the best word to he should have picked up a red that game there was a couple challenges that looked very poor like you know he has i think you were the one who said this he has like one of the strongest rankings uh for physicality in fifa he does yes or like the highest he's he's i think diego said that but i he seemed that would track with diego knows all the stats but uh, on fifa stuff but he there was a couple challenges like heavy challenges today like uh, he went he like got, studs got, up on a guy, like got a yellow, but does look like it should have been like questionable. Go to VAR, look at that kind of. So obviously this is a Premier League podcast, so I'm going to be super biased. I don't think that he's used to playing a 38 week season where every single week in and out, at least physically, he's going to be pushed a little bit. Right. No, I'm not. I'm talking about running. I'm talking about endurance. I'm talking about sprints. I'm also talking about being pushed off the ball. He got rocked the other day, and he's supposed to be the strongest dude in FIFA, and he just got rocked shoulder to shoulder. And I can't. I was trying to look up who it was, and I was like, "Yo, shit is real. Like this is a different league." Because Real Madrid are so imperial in the in the La Liga. Like they're gonna only lose three games a season, four games a season, on a bad season, five or six games. Mm. They don't really like. He, Cruz, and Modric were just a machine. And, you know, they're beating teams three or four nothing. Now, La Liga is much better than I think Premier League fans give it credit for. And you can easily just say, okay, if only there were a tournament where we all played together, what would happen? Well, La Liga's dominated the Champions League the last couple of years. So, at least in the last, like, 15 years. But I do think for him it's going to be hard. He's also a little bit older. And to be honest, United don't – they still haven't convinced me that they even have, like, an idea of what they're trying to do. Like, you watch the Leeds and you're like, they all know what they're trying to do. They're not executing, but at least they know what they're trying to do. I watch United, and I'm just like Anthony. A- Anthony, I don't. He's a baller, but like I don't see him combine well. And what was it? Was it Anthony? Who was I watching today? Who just would not pass the ball? Oh, it was on Liverpool. Who was the guy on Liverpool towards the end who just wouldn't pass the ball? Carvalho. Carva- oh, oh, Nunez. Oh my God! You should have bet John Scheimer. Car- Nunez is going to be a flop on the level, not the level of Romelu because Romelu was worth so much more, but he may not score 10 goals in the entire league. He looks so bad today. Like, bad. You should have bet John Scheimer. Scared money don't make money, Jeff. I know. Scared money don't make money. I know. He Scheimer tra- knows that, too, because he would have been pissed. <laughs> he bull- He almost bullied me into it, but I didn't take it. Take the bait. You always take the bait. No. Always take the bait. But it, we will continue to bring it up that my prediction was correct. Unless he has some like amazing thing because after the World Cup, like Uruguay wins the World Cup and he and Suarez are like boys. I, don't, I mean, who knows? But let's <laughs> – the last two weeks, the last two games that. are Asta, uh, Aston Villa Fulham. Now, Aston Villa actually played really well today. They did. They, they, deserved, a looked, fir- they, they deserved a goal or two. They deserved a goal, if not a tie, because the first goal they gave away was kind of like they just had a brain fart. Tyrone Mings literally turned around and like – you know, wave to the fans. I'm it. I'm so sorry. I brain fart, which was a really bad day for him because Gary was in the stands. Was he in the stands that for this game? No, he was in the stands for the City Liverpool game. But being so close to the World Cup, if you're a center back, you just don't want to be messing up, super big mess up. And then the second goal, like I said, I think Emmy Martinez just kind of had a brain fart. So I think they were pretty hard done. Kepo, Kepo stood in his head a bunch of games. And Kepo stood away. exactly. I, honestly, I think a tie would have been more fair. Leicester Leeds is the last game. I just think actually. Gerard is on his last legs at Villa, by the way. That's, He's, you want to put that no, no, and, and that's why I wanted to talk about. Yeah. That's why I mentioned Aston Villa playing well because the announcer was saying that Aston Villa, I think the chairman or somebody in the Aston Villa back room had said, hey, look, we have a budget. We budgeted to be eighth. That's the money we've invested in this club. The players we brought in, the culture we're trying to create, we're trying to be eighth, but we're 16th. That is rough. And they're 16th, and, you know, they're 
So Leeds is right there. Wolves is right there. They're all on nine. It's, they're trying to be Europa is really what they're trying to say. But right now they're trending towards relegation, which is not good. I do not think they let Steven Gerrard go. But the other side, if that's the angel, the devil is that Stevie G looked good when he went to Rangers because the Scottish League is a two-team league. Rangers Celtic has been forever. It's kind of like La Liga if you take out Athletic Go because they've won a couple championships. But it, when you go to a two-horse race, it's easier to look good than in the Premier League as a coach. That's all. That's all the only thing I wanted to say. I don't think they're going to fire him though. I think he's going to make it through the World Cup. I think if they get beat this midweek, he's he's gone. The thing he's is, Aston Villa the week, two seasons weekend. ago, they had that like fiesta in the tra- changing dressing room. Because they didn't get relegated. They're a team that has been over... I think they've overachieved the last last year. I think they overachieved. They brought in some talent. Coutinho, da, da, da. Emmy Martinez in goal was a great buy. I think they're overachieving, but I don't think they get relegated. But I think they finished somewhere between 12 and 15 this season. Yeah, to, to, to think that they're... An, just because they splashed some cash, that they're going to be eighth, was folly. Folly. They think that they're going to be better than like... I mean, the teams are, they're better teams than Aston Villa. Many, yes. many of them. Many there's of them. about Ten. six or seven that will always be better. Yes. And then there's three or four that are going to be biting to be better this season. For right. Sure. So that's a, that's a, I feel like that's a, that's an ambitious thing to say. Maybe it's just priming fans t- for the sacking of Gerard. If he gets sacked, I'm going to feel like he's been hard done, especially after watching them play today. They look good. And if it's not for Kepa, they're probably tying. Or making it so competitive, but they're playing so well that I don't think he gets sacked and they lost 2 nothing today. That's how well they're playing. I think if they had gotten really beat today, like actually... Like 3 or 4 nothing, and they didn't have any chances created. Then he would have been gone. I agree. I think they gave him another couple games. Uh, I think they gave him another game, at okay. least, because... At least well, I hope he doesn't get sacked, but if they lose to Fulham by a goal... Fulham's got goals in them, dude. They got Mitrovic. They, and got, they got yeah. You know, they, they're nice. Decor David Reed. They're nice. They're going to score a couple goals. The last game of Week Twelve is Leicester Leeds. Leicester oh. need the win. They need. I don't the see w. them. I don't see them winning. I think Leeds are going to run. Yes, up. I, re, Leeds are playing well. The Aronson does some does things up top. You know, he he moves the ball around. He's dynamic. He keeps people guessing. He's shifty. You know, they got solid enough defenders. I, I I put it up on the gram, and I said Leeds may have lost, but Tyler Adams and Brendan Aronson they showed out. They look so good. Brendan Aronson looks so he's good. So good. He's so confident. He's just yeah. He's confident. He's, he's gonna. Tyler Adams had a couple balls today. Just pinged out of the back, and I was like, dude, it's good. Wow. Yeah. But like Brendan Aronson and Pulisic and Reyna, if Reyna's even healthy, I don't. And a Pulisic, oh my god, if he wants to play, they could destroy England's defense. Those three. Yep. They're going to cause him so many problems. Anyways, let's go to the fantasy super quick. Fantasy, let's see where everything is at. And then I'm actually going to make a change probably live right now because we have games in less than 48 hours. Let's see. Yeah, I think one of the players that I picked up in transfer ain't got injured, so i got to cancel my transfer. Or so Will Hayden through. still at the top. Oz is in second. Rafe dropped down. He's in third. Arthur moved up. He's in fourth. Nick Bailey moved up. Mitch dropped down. I moved up into seventh. I think, yeah. Diego's right behind me in eighth. Jeff, Ely, ooh, Molly dropped down. All that praise, girl. <laughs> She's in 13th. Eric, 10, Hagen Das, Claire, Claire's name, amazing. She moved up. Everyone else kind of stayed the same. I'm wondering what, what the thing I want to say that people should start to consider. You may need to get you uh, Bobby Firmino. Diaz is done. Firmino has to play so well to even be considered to be on the Brazilian team. And Liverpool are trending up. Salah's starting to play better again. I think she could have had a couple goals today if it wasn't for Ederson playing really well. So, And Jesus looked not alive today. Like, Jesus was not resurrected today. So I'm wondering if I'm going to switch Jesus for Firmino. That's what that's, I think I'm that's doing. Where I'm, that's where I'm trending. Do I have a? Can I? Do I have a transfer in my? In my Saka game? might be worth uh, picking up. He's like seems to be the go-to guy at Arsenal right now. Saka might be picked. Yeah, I have Martinelli in the middle. So he's do I. Cheap. I might... He's cheap, but anyways, 
the fantasy is heating up and as Oz said it's actually really competitive this year people are paying attention and making changes so keep up with that week 12 is upon us we probably won't see everyone till after week 13 so unless you have any other words I'll say ciao ciao thanks for listening to the boys and bolos podcast you can find us on Facebook Twitter Instagram at boys and bolos if you'd like to be a guest please reach out you can hit us on any of the social media accounts that Jeff just mentioned or email us directly at boysandbolos at gmail.com Thanks for listening and see you next time.